Hey everyone, thanks for joining me for another Dauphin Deep Dive. And this is of course my series where I'll walk you through a recent feature or system that I built into Dauphin, but at a much lower level in the code so that if you're interested, you can bring something similar into your own project. Today's topic is going to be our relatively new object placement system that allows the player to place certain types of objects into the world in appropriate locations and also remove those objects from the world and collect them back into their inventory. I'll do my best to walk you through how I actually construct these placeable objects as well as deal with all of their placement considerations, including collisions with other scenes in the scene tree, as well as certain types of tiles in tile maps. Just as a heads up, this is not going to be a start from scratch tutorial here. We will instead be looking at the most recent code I've actually written for Dauphin. What I will try to do is explain it in a way such that it's modular enough that you can hopefully pull some of this out and slot it into your own project if you'd like. With that, we'll go ahead and jump right in, and I think the best place to do that is with the entry point that the player actually uses to place something into the world, which is their item bar. Down here in my item bar in the bottom of the screen, I actually have two items that I've designated as placeable. We have our campfire here in the second slot and our tent here in the fourth slot. You'll notice that when I actually select those slots, we immediately go into an item placement mode where we see a preview of that item in the world. So let's see how I'm doing that. We'll start here in my item bar scene and its associated script. I don't think there are any actual important implementation details within here apart from the single custom signal that this scene emits, which is a signal called item selected, passing in the item that was just selected. As you can imagine, when the user scrolls their mouse wheel or presses a number on their keypad that corresponds to a slot, that slot is selected in the UI and the signal is fired with the item in that slot. An instance of this item bar scene lives as a child of my player scene and the player is what subscribes to that signal. If we scroll down here in my player hierarchy, we can see the item bar as part of the player's HUD. And if we jump over to the signals, we can see that we are indeed connected here. We can jump to that function. So we're connected to on item bar item selected down here at the bottom. And what I'm calling when we capture that signal is a function called handle item selection. The responsibility of this function is to look at the type of item that we've just selected and determine if we need to immediately do something. This function is actually quite short right now because in most cases we don't need to do anything when the player selects an object from the item bar. For example, if it's a weapon, we don't need to actually do anything with it until the player decides to click and attack with it. In the case of a placeable item, however, we do want to immediately render that preview. And before I jump into how we're doing that, I do want to give you an overview of what an item actually is in Dauphin. At the core of nearly every object you see me interact with in Dauphin, from weapons to tools to crafting materials to placeable objects, is an item resource. My item resource is a class that allows me to basically describe all of the data associated with a particular item that I might care about in the game. The advantage of describing all of these items as resources is that I can very easily pass them around between different scenes in my game. For example, I might have one item that describes the sand crab shell fragment. That is used by so many different scenes. The crafting interface knows how to treat that as an ingredient for a crafting recipe. I can associate that with a loot table scene on the sand crab so that it can be dropped. I have an entire lootable item scene that knows how to take that item and generate something that can be dropped into the game world that the player can pick up. All of that is kind of centered around the notion of that singular item resource. What we're doing with that item data here in our handle item selection function is no different at all. In this case, we pass that item to yet another helping scene that knows exactly what to do with it. In this case, it's the item placer scene, which is again a child of my player. Jumping right into this scene, we can see what happens immediately when we set that value for item to place. The first thing we do is make sure that there were already no active previews that we need to clear out. And assuming that the new value we provided is a placeable item, we immediately create the placement preview. Actually creating the preview of the object we want to spawn is very straightforward at this point. Inside of the item data that we've been talking about passing around, I keep a reference to the path of the scene that we ultimately want to load into the world. So my campfire item data would have the string that describes the actual location of the campfire scene that we want to load onto the island. So if we jump back into our function here, you can see that I'm treating that as any other scene. We're calling load and then creating an instance and then adding that as a child of the stage that we're currently working in. 
you'll notice that we're keeping track of this new instance with this local preview instance variable. That's used for a couple things here, but if we jump up to physics process, we'll see a few important lines that help us move this preview around the scene. When we actually have a value for this preview instance, meaning we've just created it, we get the global mouse position, we do some rounding to make sure that we're actually moving this thing to real whole pixel values rather than sub-pixel values, and then we just update the global position of that preview instance. How we actually display this object in the world is actually a responsibility that's left up to the object itself. And you can kind of see that here where we tell this instance that it is in preview mode by setting this previewing flag equal to true. So at this point, we can jump right into that placeable scene and see all the things we're doing here to actually update the appearance of this object. Right away, you can see that the appearance of this placeable object is mainly driven by a shader. When we set this previewing flag, we update a shader. When we decide if we are in an appropriate location to place this object, we again update the shader. The shader here is maybe in need of a bit of cleanup, but overall very straightforward. If we are in preview mode, meaning we haven't placed this yet, we may want to make some tweaks to the colors of the sprite of this placeable object to reflect whether or not it is in an appropriate spot for placement. If we are not in such a spot, you can see that I'm turning up the R value of this sprite to kind of create a red shade for this particular object. Otherwise, we can just revert the colors back to the normal color of the sprite. In any case, when we are in preview mode, we wanna actually turn down the opacity so that the player can kind of have this translucent effect where they can see through what they're trying to place and get a better idea of exactly where it needs to go. Once we are out of preview mode, we just revert the color back to whatever it should be. So that's a good start. We know how to actually spawn one of these objects into the world, move it around with the mouse and update its appearance. But how do we know if one of these objects is actually in an appropriate place to drop it? As a child of my base placeable scene from which scenes like the tent and the campfire inherit, I have a placeable footprint scene. This is going to describe the actual footprint in the world that this item takes up, and this is going to be responsible for doing the collision that we care about with regard to placeable objects. From a scene setup perspective, this is fairly straightforward. Our placeable footprint is an area 2D, and to give us the most flexibility with various shapes of placeable items, I've chosen a collision polygon 2D here so that I can kind of modify this shape however I need based on the particular placeable object. Important to note here is the collision layers that I've chosen to use for this area 2D. The layer that this area is on is a custom layer I created for these placeable objects. The layers that this object is looking for is other placeable objects as well as terrain. Now is actually a great time for me to plug my previous Dauphin Deep Dive episode where I go in depth into my terrain system and how I'm using that with my tile maps. Go check that out if you want more information, but for now, all you really need to know is that terrain is a layer that's inhabited by tiles in my tile map. And within individual data within those tiles, I have various types of terrain, which is gonna be important here in a minute. All of the important code within my placeable footprint class lives within the process collisions function and the process tile map collision function. These kind of do what you might expect. Process collisions is responsible for looking for collisions with other placeable area 2Ds. We keep a list of colliding areas using one of these awesome filter kind of lambda functions that comes with Godot 4. And we keep track of whether or not placement is eligible based on the existence of colliding areas or also colliding tiles. Colliding tiles are managed by our process tile map collision function, which I've actually just ripped right out of my terrain detection class, which I talk about in the previous Dauphin deep dive. The gist of what we're doing here is looping through the layers of a tile map that we may be colliding with and looking at the individual tiles to understand if those are tiles that we either are or are not allowed to collide with based on the individual tile data. If we're not allowed to collide with those tiles, we keep a running list of offending tiles that we're colliding with, and that ultimately plays a role in telling us whether or not we're eligible for placement. Up here at the top of our placeable footprint class, we have a signal called placement eligibility changed. And as you might expect, as we detect changes in eligibility for placement, we fire off this signal. The parent placeable scene subscribes to this signal keeps track of whether or not it is eligible for placement and updates its appearance accordingly. 
All the way back up at our item placer scene where we're keeping track of this particular preview, we're also paying attention to unhandled input for the left click that would tell us that we want to actually place that item. And in that case, we call the place item function. A few simple things take place in here. We wanna make sure that we actually have an instance of a preview that we wanna place. We wanna make sure that the preview is eligible for placement. And if we've made it this far, we can remove the corresponding item from the player's inventory. And you'll notice down here that we don't actually need to call add child to add this thing to the world. It's already a part of the world. We just need to set previewing to false. And then we don't even need to keep track of that particular preview instance in this file anymore. This thing is just alive in the world, in the scene tree, doing its own thing, and that's perfect. The last thing that we may want to do with this placeable item is remove it from the scene based on whatever input we choose from the player. In my case, it's hitting it with a pickaxe. I've chosen a pretty Dauphin specific method of doing this, but I think it might still be valuable, so I'll walk you through it. The gist of it here is that I'm reusing the same loot table class that I have associated with my organisms for dropping loot when they're saved from corruption. This is really helpful because this is the scene that's responsible for spitting an item out into the world that the player can pick up. Each placeable item here has its own instance of a loot table as a child. When we first set up this placeable item, we actually populate that loot table with a single copy of the item that describes this placeable item. What this does is prepare the loot table with only one option of loot to drop when we call breakdown on this particular item. So when we do decide we want to destroy this item, we can just call drop item from table, get rid of this breakable item itself, and we have an item on the ground that the player can pick back up into their inventory. The result of all this is very flexible, I think. It lets me be very specific about the rules that I can set for whether something is eligible to be placed in the world, and it's just not a lot of code to manage actually putting this thing into the world and taking it back out. Hope you enjoyed this Dauphin deep dive. It feels like I jumped around quite a bit there, but hopefully you were able to see some patterns that made sense and that you'll be able to pull into your own project. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next devlog.